Michael Davidson inspired gifts. So the scarf that we showed you earlier and then this lovely tie as well. So those of you that are virtual, you will be getting uh, choices sent to you in the mail, uh, at least asked what you would like to receive and we will send those over to you. Um, because these are really folks in our community who are um, excelling as BINA members. So Alison mentioned Michael Anameda. He started getting involved with BINA as a professional development award recipient of the OMIBS course, and then he went on to um, organize his own course back in his home um, institution, the University of um, North Carolina, Pembroke. And we have had Frederick Bonnet in many, many of our virtual sessions. He's been very interested in the quality control and data management working group. And he's gonna share with you a, a lovely initiative that he has on his website around quality control and what he's showing um, for, his in, for his core facility. And then we'll have Aurelie presenting uh, about the metrology suitcase program. So Aurelie actually hosts the Canadian metrology suitcase. And then not, not uh, last but not least, um, Gaston, who, who has um, held the workshop number five here in Mexico, who brought the um, arthropods, arthropods group to life and has really um, tied the science with the art, which is something that those of you online, unfortunately, have not been able to see, but we have some beautiful exhibitions around um, the hacienda of these lovely uh, insect images and so on. So. With that, I will pass it on to Rosa Munoz, who will give us our introductions to our speakers and um, take it away for the last part of the session. And just as a reminder, we will have short question and answer between each of these presentations. Yeah, good afternoon. I am so glad to be here and be part of this interesting conference where we have been hearing a lot about all the things that are behind the the scientist work. And first, I want to present Michael Almeida, that he's a specialist researcher and lab manager at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And he will talk about changing lives through education and training. He is a very generous young man that seems that wants to share his knowledge with everybody around him. Michael, can you li listen? Are you hearing us, Michael? Can you go ahead with your sharing and presentation? Michael, are you able to hear us? Can you give us a thumbs up if you can hear us? Oh, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. I'm sorry. We just tested it and it's not a word. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry for that. And thank you for having me here. I have been an audience for most of you guys and somewhere where you guys present. And I'm so proud of myself to be here. I'm nervous because, I again, I'm always in the other side, but I'm here to share a little bit of my experience, if you you all, and how this buying a process and all the support that has been changed my life and my academic career and also help me to, to at least start to change others' life. Uh, I'm originally from Brazil, and then we speak Portuguese there. You, you can see that English is not my first language. And then I have an undergrad and a master in science from Brazil, University of Sao Paulo. And when I did my master in science, University of Sao Paulo, was my first experience with a microscope. And I have a, a interesting or a funny description about that. That is, in Brazil, I don't know if it's true like that, but this is a core facility uh, setting. 
when you use a microscope in a car, it's like you are using an Uber. You cannot drive the microscope. Someone will drive it for you. You just tell them where you need to be. And I use that as a Uber because I, I have, I was introduced to a confocal uh, microscopy, but I never drove one by myself. Okay, but at least I know what it is. By first time, like probably back in 2012, 2013. And then in 2015, I moved to US to be a research specialist at Bars Lab in Alzheimer's research. And then on that, that lab, they have a C2 confocal sitting on the corner of the lab and anyone was used. Bar invited Jacob, that is from Nikon, uh, to, to give a training for a postdoc. And that postdoc was my wife. And then he asked me, why you do not learn how to use that? I say, well, why not? I can learn. And then if I use the Uber before, now I can say, now I am in school driving and Jacob was my instructor. I start driving this Confocal every single day and all the questions, I take a picture on my phone and text Jacob and then he starts to get to me. And then I learn how to use it. The bare minimum, but I learned, I was able to produce some data to publish it and that. And then following, I start my PhD in another UNC campus at UNC Wilmington. And there my advisor told me, oh, since your project has a lot of image involved, I recommend you to take this course that is electromicroscopy and cell structure that is basically for transmitted and scanned electromicroscopy. But the course is start is uh, the lecturer is Dr. Alison Taylor by telling us the basics of the opticals and image. And that was the first time when I study how a microscope work. And my first class, she asked me, can you explain explain to us how you get to in this microscope field or how you know how to use a microscope? I say, I don't know. The microscope to me is like my cell phone. If you call me, I can answer. If you text me, I can text you back. But I have no idea how this works. And then I start. And then, as everybody know, after that, it starts the COVID. And I could not use the transmitted, transmitted electron microscope anymore. And then I use my time with Dr. Taylor and I wrote, basically, I wrote all the technical part for uh, ABCU, since Pembroke, you get on that in a little bit, is a minority serve institution. I wrote a grant to the DOD to support us to have two new instruments there, a new Confoco, the A1 and a C microscopy there. But okay, we got the grant, we received that in 2020. And then I say, okay, but now I don't know if I know how to use this properly. I say, okay, I need to invest some time in training myself. And then with the support from Baina, from UNC Pembroke and UNC Wilmington, I attend the optical microscopy image in the Biosense. You can see me here to prove that I was there. If you see Baina web page, you can see I have a quote where I define this experience it was like a blast to me because I remember the day when I was coming back and, I, and the first thing that I told my wife when I got home, I say, I you never make image as I did before. And I you help you others do not make the same mistake that I did. I learned how to use that in the hardest way because I learned by just mistakes, mistakes. I try, 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 I never stood. And then I say, now I don't know a lot about microscopy, but at least I, I, at least I know where I can search or who I can ask. And then you can see, Alison North here, she is the director of that course. That was my first time when I talked with her. And then one of our conversation there, I told her, I want to help others to get kind of the same opportunities that I, I am having here. And she said, when you go back home, you have one thing to do. You're going to go to NC, where I am right now, NC Chapel Hill, and you're going to ask for Michelle Itano and Pablo Ariel. They will help you whatever what you need. Okay. I come back and then I start to talk with Michelle Itan. Okay, I wanna offer a course for the undergrads at Pembroke because they don't have such opportunity. Before I talk about the course and how Michelle helped me on that, I wanna talk about Pembroke. Pembroke, your University of North Carolina, Pembroke is the newest campus from the UNC system. It's located in Robson County, that is a rural and poor county was like 
couple years ago was between the 10 poorest county in the US. You can see they have no higher education, they have a low income, they have some children that are not food secured. And then like it's a really poor place. And not only that, they face a lot with weather problems. The hurricane always causes them problems. I, I can tell that like in my seven years that I was there, I have like problems if at least five different hurricanes that like devastate the region. And then again, this just to highlight is a really poor region, is a place where most of the students are first generation in family to be in the university and they need to have a job to support the their their course and then that is make everything worse and difficult to them. Okay. If that post I you say we offered this first course last year in May in May last year. And then you can see here back to us is Michelle Itano help it then if my boy that is the CTO where I learned how to use that. Here we have Jacob that is on the right side uh, helping train some students on the A1 microscopy. And basically this course was offered and supported by Bina, DOD, and NICOM to help students for undergrad and also minority serve institution. And also a few faculties attended the course. We have a great team that volunteered to help us to teach a couple of these, you know, I will highlight here ONS that she did a brilliant talk to end the course at the last day, not only about her job or her image techniques that she works at Penn Special Microscope, but she also gave a talk to inspire students. And remember, they are most of first generation in graduation to tell them, you can do whatever what you want since you work hard on that and is a, a word of opportunity that you can use to do whatever what you want. And then we are here is a, just a few people that are ha always there to help you if you need some help. Okay. I highlight two quotes from the students there. I highlighted this quote. I'm not going to read that, but basically they say, oh, this, this course changed my life as the OMIBs changed my life like a year and so half back. They, both of these students, Eriza and Ming, they are now working in some image-related job. Eriza is working in a private company. She attended the course there. And Ming is work as a research researcher at Duke University. He now is also is starting his PhD there. And both of them are mostly work with image. And then I think this since I was transformed by the helper and supports from communities like Baina and help for many other uh, specialists in imaging, I am, I am trying to change some life, to change some life stories and help others to do the same. As I said, I'm from Brazil. And if you do not learn anything from me today, the only thing I want to tell you how to say thank you in Portuguese, that is obrigado. And also be aware that this year, we did not offer the course at Pembroke because I am a movie campus because my postdoc, but next year I will offer again and then we we'll try to increase and expand this idea to attend more and more undergrads and minorities to serve and I will be happy to answer any question. And again, thank you so much all that you support me and give me some opportunity to not only change my life, but also to start to change others' life. Thank you so much. Well, we have five minutes for questions. Somebody has a question. I cannot hear you. Yeah, can you hear me? It's Alison North here. Hi. No, I cannot hear you. Uh oh. You can't hear. Try again. Can you hear this? I'm not no? here. I'm not listening. Yeah. Can you write it in the chat? Yeah. Hey, Frederick, are you listening then? Yeah, I don't hear either. 
Hello. Try again. Maybe now is working. Hi. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, now I can. Hi, Michael. It's Alison here. Hi. Yeah. I give the excellent talk. It's such a pleasure to see you. So I have a question to ask you, which others may be interested in. So what did you find was the biggest challenge in setting up your own course at UNC? Oh, the biggest challenge in convincing others to volunteer to to teach just because I don't I'm I don't know if I am able to teach others about microscope. Can you hear me? Yes. Just disappear. Okay, but I, I'm joking, of course. Is I think you guys that volunteer for that was great, but I think it's so hard to put a course together because you the idea or of that course is not only give them what you can be as an image scientist or what you or what you can do when you use a microscope, but it's more to inspire them that is a kind of a new road of jobs and a new opportunity where you can learn about a technique and also apply that to change your life. And I think that is the the background, and that was what I try when I ask you, for example, I don't want you to talk just about the microscope. I want you to talk about your career, where you came from, and how you get where you are right now to inspire them. Because one of the most common questions the student ask when I was at Pembroke is, do you think I should leave the state to, to do some study? And then I say, well, you are asking for a person that came from another country to work over here. And then I will also be supportive for that. But I also want others to share their experience and show them, yes, it's possible. You can survive everywhere and come that you can learn and has a lot of people that are prompt to help us in many ways. Well, thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, this is yes, I can. at UMass Medical School. It is great to meet you. It's really inspiring what you're doing. Um, I don't have a question. I just, uh, if you need help with uh, people how, uh, teaching, for example, about data, and because I think that's coming up as a career for there is going to be a lot of need for people that are able to uh, curate data and uh, manage data. I think that's something that I would be interested in teaching if you need help with that. Well, th thank you so much. For sure, I will contact you for the next year. I think that was, was one thing. When I, I started the course, I was like, okay, I wanted three or four lectures. And a week before, Michelle and, and I was dealing, like, we have 12 people and ask, can I teach? Can I teach? Just because to show how much people are want and prompt to help others and then a lot of people get interest in that but for sure I will contact you and thank you so much for that offer. Well before we continue maybe there is a question from the virtual part no? Just just a follow up. Um, hi I'm Adan Guerrero from Mexico. So if you need also uh, help from people that can speak Spanish or Portuguese uh, also mm -hmm. you have help from the Mexican Okay. Language. Great. Thank you so much. I will also contact you. No questions from the virtual part here? Sorry, Michelle. Oh, I just, oh, sorry. I just saw, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, I just saw a comment in the chat say, okay, that is maybe a great idea to put like the educational work group, to put a list of volunteers that might want to, to be lecturing some course and some training source. I think that's a great idea and going to be so helpful. Hi, Michelle. Kildare from Brazil. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Muito bom ouvir a sua palestra. Uh, so, uh, uh, just switch it uh, to English. So, you mentioned that you, your previous experience in Brazil, you couldn't touch the microscope. So, did you experience that in other facilities in the U.S. and, uh, and the, uh, the other way around in Brazil? Are there other facilities where uh, the operator can, the user can operate the instruments? Well, 
that's a great uh, again i don't know if you, brazil where i used there like 10 years ago is still at the same but when i used it was like that and i can understand the reason is just because it's so expensive if you need to fix anything and then it's hard to train a lot of people because you it has a limitation and the number of like confoco for example that people can use then to save time to save money is appropriated to have one operator and then just help people to get the image that they need. And I do not have any other place where I work and between those UNC campus, campus where I see such the same like structure in a core where you cannot drive the instrument. But again, I think that's most to go in the direction is how hard it is. Maybe people did not realize if like uh, Confoco gets some trouble in Brazil, how much time it takes to be fixed because people need to travel from other countries with pieces from other countries and also it's so expensive for us. And then I completely understand that. And then, but I do not see that here where I have been training or used some instrumentation. Well, thank Thanks. you very much. We need to move to the, our next speaker. He is Federic Bonnet. He is leader of the Light Microscopy Facility at NDIBL on a mission to make microscopy accessible for every student and researcher in Maine. He will talk through the lens of precision, ensuring quality at MDIBL's Light Microscopy Facility. Yep. Um, hello, everyone. So. Uh, uh, um, thanks uh, to the organizer to give me the opportunity to talk today. So I'm not Brazilian, but uh, I'm French. Um, so uh, I'm Frédéric Bonnet and uh, I manage the light microscopy facility at uh, MDIBL. So uh, MDIBL, it's a non-profit research institute for biomedical research with a focus on uh, regeneration and aging. And also, it's a really important place for training in, in Maine. And so to support research and education, MDIBL is equipped with a microscopy facility uh, that I manage. So basically, uh, our goal is to make microscopy accessible to every scientist in Maine. And to come back on what has been said just before, uh, I did the same thing. So I set up a, a microscopy course uh, for all people who want to use microscopy in Maine. And uh, in the second year of this year, we do it and we started to open for external people. So basically, uh, if you are in BINA, you would see the, the ad for the course uh, and you can also apply and, and, and you can join. So um, to come back uh, on the talk, so to help people with, uh, with um, the facility. So basically, I created this website and you can find all the information you want about the facility, the equipment, the training and also the course. But today I will not talk. I will not talk about uh, the microscope or the training I'm providing. But uh, I want to share with you some of the best practice we have implemented to um, promote accuracy and reproducibility uh, in your data. Um, so, as scientists, uh, we know uh, the critical importance of producing high quality and reliable data from our microscope. And also, as we know, a lot of things can go wrong with the microscope. And so one thing I teach people, it's when they come to the facility, it's microscope, microscopy, it's not easy. Uh, a lot of things uh, can go wrong. It's really complex. And then you have to think a little bit about your experiment. So uh, I put some paper as a reference, but microscopy, it's also not just pushing a button. It's also thinking about uh, your hypothesis, your uh, sample preparation, your imaging parameters, and also your uh, image analysis. Um, and so my goal here with the talk and the facility is really make sure that everyone who is using the facility from a student to a PI can have confidence in the accuracy of their data and are able to report them properly. So during the next uh, eight minutes, I will provide you an overview of the approach to promote rigor, transparency and consistency uh, for all aspects of the light microscopy facility. And if you have questions, please uh, ask at the end. So um, 
as we know, uh, microscopes need to be uh, test and uh, you need to track the performance of the microscope over time to make sure it works properly and to detect any issue early on. And so a couple of papers exist and have established guidelines to monitor and maintain microscopes. So here uh, I put four of them. And also in this paper, they recommend tools to test microscope. So there is some tools you can do it yourself, but some tools uh, are also, uh, you can buy them directly. They are a little bit pricey, but uh, it's much easier to test your microscope. And so the one I use uh, regularly are this one at the bottom here. Uh, it's a slide with different bits, multicolor bits from different size. And so I use this to test uh, the PSF, the point spread function of the objective. Uh, I also use a kidney slice, a multicolor um, sample. I use a power meter and then I use a slide uh, which is come from uh, Argolite. So the company is called Argolite. And this slide is really nice because you have different patterns which allow you to test different things with your microscope. And so thanks to this protocol and this tool, uh, I can test I can test my microscope on different um, with different frequency. So basically I test the microscope on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis and on a quarterly basis. And so basically as you can see, on a weekly basis I will just uh, make sure everything is clean around the microscope, make sure the objective are clean. On a monthly basis, I will, I will use the kidney slide uh, when I do a training and I will just uh, take an image of it and this give me, give me a quick idea about the quality of the microscope. Uh, I will check uh, the power of the light source and I will also use a slide with the bits to check the PSF of my, of my objective. And then on a quarterly basis, I will use the Argolite slide to push a little bit more the the, the test. And so basically with this slide, I will show you, you can um, check the field uniformity or distortion. You can calculate the lateral resolution. You can check if your microscope is able to properly reconstruct your sample in 3D. You can calculate if you have a, a Z-shift during your Z-stack, uh, etc., etc. Uh, and so this is basically uh, uh, what my result looks like. So here you have an example from uh, the Zeiss uh, Imager M2, so it's an upright microscope. And so basically uh, I do my test and I write a report. So uh, this is different snapshot of the report. So first on the top here, you will find the power of the LED. Then underneath here, you will find a representative picture of the PSF with the different objectives. Uh, taken with the bits. With the bits, uh, um, I can calculate the resolution for the different wavelength. And so this is what I do on the monthly basis. And then on the quarterly basis, I will use the Argolite slide. So you have an example of the pattern here and here. And so one pattern allows you to calculate the resolution. So it's another way to calculate the resolution. So I have two reading. I can calculate the resolution, the resolution with two different techniques, with the bits or with the grid. Um, and then the slide is nice because you, because you can do extra tests like this one, which is a 3D reconstruction. So the slide has a sphere in 3D uh, in the glass. And so you image this sphere and then you can calculate if your image uh, match the size of the sphere. And so this will tell you if your microscope is able to properly reconstruct your sample. So it's a little bit pricey, but it's really nice. Um, then what I do, Basically, um, these tests, I do them, as I said, on a regular basis, and they give me a general behavior of the microscope. So I know if there is a problem or not. But sometimes, uh, some experiments require specific tests. And so uh, one of these experiments, it's for example, co-localization analysis. Uh, you have a paper which explains which test and which control you should perform. And so when people want to do a co-localization analysis, usually I know. And so I will go with them to do specific tests. And one of these tests, basically, it makes sure there is no chromatic shift um, between your channel uh, in your sample due to the microscope. So what I do, I do the acquisition with the people. And then on top of it, I will image my bits. And then I will calculate, thanks to Fiji, if there is a shift due to the microscope between the two channels. And then with the PI, we decide if the shift is okay or not. 
And if it's not okay, thanks to Fiji, you know the pixel shift. And so you can correct your image to be able to interpret it properly your result. Um, so um, this is for a specific user, but as I said, all my tests, uh, I create a report, uh, I save it on my PC, and then I create a Google document uh, with just a summary for my user to know what's going on with the microscope. And then our booking system, uh, it's called Open Iris. It's free for now, but after you will have to pay in January. Uh, for each microscope, I can enter a log for the maintenance. For, so for example, here you have a screenshot of the Zeiss 980. And so you can see when Zeiss came, when I did um, maintenance on the microscope because there was an issue with the laser, et cetera, et cetera. So like this, all my users know exactly what's going on with the microscope. Uh, and so usually if they start to argue saying the microscope has a problem, usually I know it's not the case. It's usually on the user side, there is a problem. Um, but um, it's good to know, at least I can prove. So this is what uh, the facility does. I do this test and I'm sure my microscope behave well. Now, uh, after having, having talked about documentation on the facility, facility side, uh, I would like to shift to discuss about documentation from the user side. And when it comes to the user, I'm talking about writing a good material and method and presenting the figure properly. So as you know, the material method is really important to be reproducible. And as you can find on internet on, or uh, on some publication, there is a big issue because people don't write a proper material and method. And as you can see here from this comment, usually it's because there is no communication between the facility and the user. And the second problem, it's uh, about how do you present your image. And so also so you have guidelines now, uh, uh, and this paper has been published recently, uh, which tell you what the best way to present your data. And so what we have decided to do on the facility, it's uh, we have guidelines, uh, rules. And so everyone who is using the facility has to send me a draft of the paper to make sure uh, the material method is write, written properly, the figures are shown properly, and uh, the facility is acknowledged properly. So you can do, go on the website, uh, you will see this page, and basically for each um, um, line here, you have the paper uh, as a reference. So what I also, oops, what I also do for, for people, it's uh, give them access to checklist. So previous people have published checklist, uh, what to do with your figure, what to do with your uh, imaging method and your Im image analysis method. Um, so what I did, I use some template and I customize the template for each microscope. So I make their life much easier. So for example, here it's for the Zeiss uh, uh, imager, uh, Axo Imager M2. So I already written the paragraph for my user. The only thing they have to do, it's copy and paste and just fill some specific information. So for example, which objective they use, which filter cube, which die, but otherwise everything else, uh, the model of the camera, it's already uh, here. And so you, they don't have to worry about this. And finally, you have also guideline about how to acknowledge the facility properly. And so this is also available on the website. And I put all these documents on each door uh, where there is a microscope, basically. Um, so this is what we have uh, implemented on the facility. Um, so basically, um, we have uh, implemented a maintenance schedule with a routine check to make sure the microscope is working properly. Uh, I keep a report and I make the report available to the user so they know exactly how the microscope behaves, if there is an issue, if the issue is important or not for their experiment, and if we can correct their image, if we know the problem. And then I also implemented all the checklist and template to make sure people are able to write a material method really easily. And uh, finally, to make sure that there is no problem between the user and the facility, uh, we have established this policy that the facility reviews the, the, the manuscript before publication. Uh, and with this, uh, I would like to thank you uh, for your attention. Thanks.
Well, we are running out, out of time. Then we will have just one question. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Katerina. Um, so you have, uh, it seems like you have accumulated a lot of experience. So I will uh, invite you to share your experience with uh, either BINA Quality Control and Data Management Working Group or with Quareb, any of the working groups there. It would be nice if we can exchange this information, uh, how you do things. For example, Quar as you yep. know, Quareb is developing a lot of the, of the of the protocols. So it would be great if we could uh, share. Okay. Yep, uh, of course. It's not easy. So usually, as I said, people have published protocol to do the maintenance, but it's hard to re re do the test all, always in the same way. So it always takes time to have a, a routine to do my test. And so I did some optimization because it takes time to do a, a full check. It takes a, a full afternoon and usually it takes me a full day to analyze the data. So it's a commitment to do. And so I, I try to improve this a little bit to be more efficient, uh, but make sure my user know exactly what's going on with the microscope. Yeah, uh, so in part of we are developing exactly that. So I mean, it would be nice to, to for you to to I invite you to to participate. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. It has been a very interesting talk, and I think that everybody can contact Frederick to continue mm -hmm. the discussion. Thank you very much. Thanks. We will move to our next speaker, Aurélie Claret Duot. I hope that I say it correctly. <laughs> she is a cell imaging facility manager of the research center, hospital center of the University of Montreal. And also she is a microscopy lover. Thank you. Hi. Everybody can hear me well, yes? Okay, so um, I will start with, with little words in uh, Spanish. So, me gustaría agradecer a los organizadores de la Divina uh, por esta maravillosa experiencia, tanto profesional como humana. Aunque mi español está muy oxidado, me da un inmenso placer de volver a, escu a escuchar este idioma que canta a mis oídos. Mil gracias. Thank you. <laughs> so let's go and talk about a little bit about the Metrology Suitcase Program. So the Metrology Suitcase Program is part of the Quality Control and Data Management Working Group of the BINA that we already heard a lot about. Uh, we are actually about 10 active members in this group. Uh, I would like to notice uh, mainly uh, Natalie and Shamari uh, that are at the Allen Institute. Um, also Shawe that is uh, at uh, uh, Pittsburgh uh, University. Uh, Kurt Weiss that is at uh, Madison. Um, and also uh, Scott uh, that is um, at uh, Johns Hopkins. So we all have, and of course, all the other uh, members. Uh, so we all have a dedicated role uh, in this uh, group. Uh, and right now we have uh, five sweet cases around uh, the BINA. So three in the US, um, one that Natalie and Shamari uh, had, uh, one that Shawe had, and one that Kurt, Kurt uh, has. There is one in Canada that uh, I have in my facility. And now I'm happy to announce that Mexico will have uh, his own uh, metrology suite case. I don't know if it's still here at uh, the Hacienda, but maybe we can showcase a little bit if, uh, if needed. So, but it's still in progress. So yes, yeah, so my facility uh, has one uh, of the suite case. I receive it uh, in January. And um, I would like that just to share a little bit about why uh, I chose to participate to this program. So we are located uh, in downtown Montreal. So let me show you. So uh, we are here. So Montreal is an island um, and we are pretty uh, east in Montreal, but in Montreal, it's not east, it's south. Montreal has its own uh, like uh, direction. 
Um, so I am in this building, and that's really funny, uh, Chris, because uh, we are also celebrating the 10 years of the building. Um, and so this is a building attached to the hospital. So why do I choose to, to, to participate to this uh, program? Um, my background, when I started my PhD, I was mainly doing flow cytometry. And in flow cytometry, you have a lot of QC controls uh, to do before using your cytometer. But I realized when I started microscopy that it was not really the case. And I always feel that in microscopy, we should also have like QC control in our instruments. Uh, when I became a facility manager, I would like to guarantee uh, the results produced with my instruments to my users. And I think Frederick <laughs> show like a, a really nice way to 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 guarantee that. Um, also, I I thought that having the the metrology suite case will provide a good way to follow uh, to have a good follow up on, on my instruments. As the cell uh, imaging facility in French, it's Platform d'Imagerie Cellulaire, or PIC. Uh, I produced this image with one of my microscopes, and I'm really proud of it. <laughs> so we are three uh, on the facility. So there is Greg, the scientific director, myself uh, as a full-time employee. And uh, from um, in April, I received the help of Mamkani uh, that is working with me one day per week. It's not a lot, but still. It's good. And I hope that uh, she will be probably dedicated to do the metrology suite case measurement with me. I will ask for a grant to have more time with her. So in the facility, we have um, uh, six main instruments. Uh, one bright field microscope that in which I will probably not do really a suite case um, a measurement. Um, one white field and spinning disc and turf dice microscope. Uh, two uh, SP5, old SP5 <laughs> Leica microscope that are still working. And I, I would like to use mainly the, the suite case uh, to, to do measurement for these uh, microscopes. Uh, I also have like um, old but not so old uh, <laughs> a confocal two photon microscope from Olympus. And last year we buy a new LSM 900 airway scan two microscope. So I feel that all this different type of microscope will allow to have like a good um, knowledge about um, how to use the metrology suite case and how to adopt the protocols. So what the program consists of. So the program is the program of the metrology suite case is modeled on a similar program initiated by the French network of multidimensional optical fluorescence microscopy, the RTMFM. The principle is to have light source intensity and stability measurements and PSF checks on light microscopy instruments. And then we would like to have, uh, to have the capability to upload all the data to a centralized repository being organized by the Query PME program. Uh, mainly it's through the Airtable. So the test facilities like mine is mainly to provide users with a realistic indication of the time commitment needed to uh, use the metrology suite case. So it's really a program going on. So what is in the suite case? So the protective heart shell contains a PSF uh, check slide from PSF check. Nevertheless, we feel that it was not a really useful um, piece of the, um, of the suite case. So, so we, you will see that we, we go with another one. Uh, we have a tetraspect fluorescent microsphere size uh, uh, spheres from Thermo Fisher, so probably the same that uh, Frederick is using in his facility. Uh, we also have a power meter from Tor Labs and and the um, the microscope slide uh, to measure the power at the um, at, uh, at the objectives. So um, uh, and of course all the cable to to link this. Um, and what is new, in fact, is that because we feel that the PSF check slide was not so easy to use, um, we have now a bit slide mounted by Glenn Nielsen uh, from Newcastle University uh, that is mounted with a green fluorosphere around 0.2 uh, micrometers. So that will allow us to do a better uh, PSF. So how it works? <clears throat> For now, we mainly uh, provide uh, support for the power meter only. 
Uh, so Kurt developed uh, all the protocols under protocols.io. Uh, and it's very well done. So first you have a full part describing what you should do before receiving the sweet case. So which papers you should read, uh, which softwares or manuals uh, you should download and or read. So that's really useful. Uh, after that, for all, all the, the SOPs for the illumination settings, we mainly follow the illumination power stability and linearity measurements for confocal and white field microscopes uh, paper uh, provided by the working group one from Coapin. Uh, we are also working on videos uh, to provide some tutorials. So it's me and Xiaowei that will provide some videos. We still have to mount them, but we also know that Quaret Limi already had some had done some, so we don't want to to cross uh, uh, to overlap. So we are going to, to cross, cross check uh, what it's uh, useful. So what's next? Uh, so we would like, uh, of course, to annotate and finalize all the SOPs for the power emitter uh, program. Uh, we we should probably at one point develop SOPs for the PSF. So probably uh, Frederic, Frederic, your help will be really really helpful for that. Um, of course, we would like also to have a workflow, like a time frame for users to know how long it will take to do all this. Uh, I have six microscopes, let's say five microscopes, a lot of objective to, to measure and to test how uh, long it will take. Uh, finally, for all the data collection, uh, we want uh, it to be as uniform as possible through the different facilities. Um, the how often it's still to be determined, um, maybe also <laughs> Frederic has a good uh, a good uh, flow for that workflow for that, uh, and finally uh, the compilation of the data and the follow up uh, has to be determined. Uh, we are also in progress to develop a web page, uh, so like that you will have all the information needed uh, for the for the um, suite case. So, how the suite case can impact your facility. For sure, you will have a way uh, better follow-up of your instruments. And I feel that it's really, really um, um, needed in all the facilities. Um, because you will have a good follow-up of your instruments, maybe you will avoid, avoid big problems on your, uh, on your systems and uh, you will have a good uh, prevention. Uh, of course, I think it will also uh, guide you to the quality control and fair science. Uh, we are all talking about that, reproducibility, uh, be sure that your instruments are in uh, good shape uh, to do like uh, uh, co-localization co images, that's really important. I, the sweet case will really help you to do that. Also, don't forget that you will be linked to a community that can help with when problems occur. But finally, the most important uh, will probably be to have like an approved uh, quality control uh, tag on your facility and not also, for example, on the web page, but also when people publish and use your facility, uh, maybe we will have like something telling you that uh, it will be uh, approved, uh, suite case approved. So that is. Um, Muchas gracias. Uh, here you can see a lot of pictures coming from the Train the Trainer program that I highly recommend. It was really nice, except one pic picture, and I think you can guess which one. Thank you so much. We have time for a couple of questions. Hi. Hi, Audley. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks. Uh, really nice talk. Uh, I want to ask you about the frequency of the uh, of the metric. Of them? The, of the how many times you 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 have been? Oh, yeah. So 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 that's one of the question. It's um, how often you should do your laser measurement, how often you should do your PSF. Uh, it's still an ongoing one because uh, the goal of the metrology suite case is to circulate through different facilities. So you, there is one thing. First, you can have the suite case to start the measurements, and then you can 
on your own facility by by all the equipment to do your own measurements. But what the uh, sweet case um, uh, facility give you uh, is that, for example, the power meter will be calibrated every year. So you will have really like a, a follow up because if you change the power meter, maybe you will not have exactly the same uh, values. So that's why it's important to use always the same uh, power meter to do your measurement. Um, uh, we will say, I think that for now, every six months will be like a good, uh, a good way to, to do the, the, the first measurements. After that, maybe some facilities would like to do like more measurements, but um, it, it's time consuming. So if, uh, for example, I am just, myself on the facility now i have like one person that can help me but if you are alone it's it's a lot of work we are doing the same in argentina we are at the same time okay okay nice <laughs> thank you hey hey measuring psf is always tricky when we speak about bits sizes intensities colors and I wonder if you have explored other ways of measuring the response function of the instrument. What I'm thinking on that is using FCS or correlation-related techniques. Sure, but all the, man all the microscopes will not be able to do that type of measurement, I think, uh, especially wide field. Um, no, I mean, yes, th that's definitely, we had a lot of discussion <laughs> in the working group, uh, like uh, how, how the, the beads, are, are they stable, uh, how many beads you should uh, acquire, um, you, should you uh, use like uh, multicolor beads uh, to do like uh, multiple color. Um, yeah, so all this is in, in discussion, but uh, we would be really happy to have any any help or any feedback from uh, other <laughs> people. Um, hi, thank you for your work on this. Uh, so kind of following, sorry, yeah. kind of following along with, as you guys have been developing this, we've been trying to implement some of these protocols in house. And what we've noticed is that uh, we get measurements for our microscopes and we get a number. And I don't know if, what is, that, who is? is that good? Is that bad? So is there yeah. any plan to develop references, acceptable yeah. ranges for different kinds of scopes? Exactly. So this is another point. Uh, we want absolutely to, for that, we need to have like a lot of measurements. So we will need a lot of, of uh, input data to be able to say, okay, that type of laser from this company used in this model uh, will have like that range, should have that range of intensity. I think at the beginning, what should be important is to have a, a, a long-term follow-up of your instrument. So if you see any lower value or, or really uh, high variation, depending on the different dates, uh, that's another point. For example, doing the date, the, the measurement every six months, maybe we will face um, an, like uh, um, non-uniformity or, or uh, because I feel that depending on the season in Montreal, if it's cold outside, if it's really hot outside with a lot of, of humidity, it can change your measurement, your measurements. So I think also how many often you, you do your measurement can impact your results. Hi, um, just want to personally invite anybody that want to further um, talk on these topics, the, the Quarep work group or meeting monthly and, and are, are going over these uh, these topics. And what is really nice is that we usually have at least two manufacturers in those discussions. So please um, seriously consider joining uh, one of the Quarep uh, LIMI work group. Thank you. And thank you for the invitation. Our next talk will be given by Gaston Contreras. He's the staff scientist manager of the core facility at the Logia UNAM in Mexico City, responsible for laser microdissection and the microscopy laboratory. And he's, of course, part of the Mexican bioimaging, as you saw it signing the the memorandum of agreement. And he has been participating also 
as organizer of the of one of the Mexican bioimaging workshops. Thanks, Rosa. Do you think my volume is nice, or you want me to talk like Diego yesterday, that is very, very loudly? <laughs> it's fine. Okay. So first, first, uh, I would like to thank uh, too much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Nikki, for the, your invitation to participate with a small talk in this uh, in this meeting. I'm very proud to be here. I happy that you are here as well and i hope you are enjoying the place enjoying the food the pool for someone of you or whatever you have experienced so far okay so uh, i want to talk uh, i want to share with you guys my experience by organizing one of the the meetings that are part of the Mexican bioimaging community. Um, so I would like to ask you, or you can raise your hand, how many of you here have had the chance to organize one Congress or meeting, symposium, colloquium? Okay, I, I expected that more of you, but uh, I saw um, few, 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 few hands. But anyway, I want to start, I, want, I don't want to consume all the, all the time. Okay, I will be quick here because uh, already Diego talked about this, but as you remember yesterday, uh, we are part of the one program, one project that is called Connecting the Mexican Bioimaging Community. So, and part of this proposal is to organize uh, congresses, uh, workshops, microscopy workshops about bioimaging uh, throughout the, all the country. So, so far, uh, there are or uh, have been organized around six, six workshops. You can see on the map, the seven one is coming soon. That Diego first will be part of the main organizer. So he, he will know what uh, what exactly means to organize one by himself. So uh, something that is important to, to, to say in, uh, in this meaning of this workshop is that each workshop is part of one academic, academic mode and another one is to perform an outreach that how by your image, a microscopy could reach to the society, okay? So each one have the academic and the outreach. So I want to talk about the five one, okay? The fifth one. So in this in this uh, is, uh, case, it's not, it's not the only one because the fourth one also have this uh, modality that we participated two people uh, it was not considered, but uh, the fourth one and the fifth one, uh, a couple of guys uh, organized these uh, workshops. Uh, maybe uh, it's something important to, to know, to contribute, that there are people that have different perspectives and can improve the organization in broad terms, okay? So that's what I said. One uh, modality is the academic, and other another one is the outreach. I want to talk in detail uh, uh, forward. Okay, so in this uh, case, uh, we wanted to because the philosophy of the how to join, how to um, get the community of bioimaging in Mexico, is to call the, all the community. The all the community have all these kind of techniques. Uh, of this type of microscopy. Uh, maybe I'm not wrong, but all these different types of microscopy techniques, at least once is involved with bio, bio, bio stuff, okay? Even that other that is, uh, is uh, it's very hard that people is talking about another techniques like atomic force or scanning tunneling. But 
there are these techniques using bio also, okay? So we need to uh, enclose coverage most of the techniques in this workshop, okay? From the basics to the advanced techniques. So we prepare, of course, with uh, my colleague, Ruth Rincon, this uh, program to coverage all these different techniques, okay? Of course, we performed around 37 lectures, around 30 minutes each. Uh, we invited uh, four foreign speakers from Argentina, two from Argentina, one from USA and one from Spain. Uh, from these 37 uh, talks, uh, six talks were in uh, virtual mode. And, and from this um, academic modality, we also perform uh, demonstrations, demonstrations uh, covering all the same big list of microscopy techniques, okay? From the basics, the optics, the uh, some techniques for sample preparation has histology, plant histology, animal histology, the laser microdissection, because I, I'm in chairs of one core facility about laser microdissection. So I need to talk about uh, laser microdissection. STM, STM, SEM, AFN, confocal, team, uh, et cetera, okay? So uh, of course, uh, our colleague and another colleague, uh, Monica Ramirez, help us too much for the logistics to, to get accommodation, the lunch, lunch and coffee break services, of course. And something that I wanted to say that, that that's why I ask you how many people have organized uh, uh, some uh, Congress, because in, in, in a time, it's a lot of stress that you can accumulate during this uh, the session, okay? So this is idea was, this idea was, uh, what was defined by uh, this lady, Sarai de Jesus Cruz and Rudrin Con, that to have a session of uh, yoga to release, to relax about this of accumulated stress. So that's uh, so, so important. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I couldn't participate. You see, but uh, others, <laughs> enjoy, but it's, it's nice. I guess it's a, it's a very nice uh, idea to, to do this uh, in, in another session, okay? Uh, of course, uh, we have the uh, mode in virtual, was coordinated by uh, this lady, Dr. Janaina Dos Santos Garcia, and uh, here we got around 10, uh, 100 uh, person, and we also, Perform a demonstration in this one. But what we can do is to do what we do, which is going using the technology in this one. That's here. Okay, it's here. Yeah. Maybe you cannot see very well, very clear here, but there is one camera here. There is another camera here. There is another camera here. There are a lot of cameras covering all the room and all the stuff. What is doing my hands? What is doing uh, by the screen? Okay, th this is the way how to do um, virtual virtual demonstration about one technique. What we, we wanted to do this, right? Here, maybe you, you, you see the video. Some guy tried to uh, draw here, this is the demonstration of the laser microdissection technique that we, you can isolate one part of the tissue, biological tissue, and you can extract it later to do a pot a bio, bio, uh, molecular analysis. But some guy, guess, guess who? Guess who? Uh, Try to draw this uh, logo, this uh, telecom, <laughs> here and collect it. Guess who? Guess. <laughs> okay. So, um, this is this, this is one to want to say. It. Uh, this is uh, for me is the, the the more one of the more important things that we perform during this workshop. That is to 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 organize to uh, make elaborate this kind of manual. This is a manual to be 
like a guide for consultation of the audience, of the students that are attending to this uh, Microsoft. It's not to go and to enjoy four or five days, but also you can get something later to, for consultation. Because uh, as I told you in the beginning, we try to cover all the microscopy, microscopical techniques. So here we decided to do this kind of manual, you to explain the principles and fundamentals of the, each technique, elaborate a scheme of the mechanisms, to add some figures as examples, and of course, a biography, okay? This is one example of the, this technique, laser microdization looks something like this. So we, do th we did this, for each technique around uh, 15 te uh, different microscopic techniques, okay? So uh, later we did the outreach, of course, how to go, how to reach the, the society. For, for, uh, we were talking uh, uh, about this uh, issue uh, three days ago in one uh, session group. And we said that it's important to go uh, with the society, meaning with the, the, young, the young people, right? So we did this in the biggest uh, science motion of the country called Universum. Universum is part of uh, UNAM, the biggest university in Mexico. So we covered these different uh, sections to explain to this uh, uh, young community, okay? Students, high school, basic school, okay? I want to talk, of course, each one, but as you can imagine, here we have the chance to meet this guy. I didn't know uh, before, never, but uh, my wife, my wife is, is a biologist. He, uh, she introduced me to this guy, and this guy is expert, very nice guy, who is uh, uh, doing this kind of uh, images about insects uh, you can see over there and you can see in the uh, reception area too, the coffee break area, okay? Uh, this is some uh, images that we participated there. You can see. Also here, we decided to elaborate, uh, make some uh, cards with small description, a nice description about some kind of samples that you can collect using microscopy techniques. Is something related to Pokemon cards. Yeah, you know Pokemon cards, right? So uh, uh, here's some some, well, uh, some few examples, of course, uh, there are more. But the, the idea is this, is to share with these uh, young people, uh, the kids, okay, the students, to at least to have a memory about this participation. And another thing is another uh, issue is that we decided to make the memory, the Congress memories about the, the workshop. Of course, some people, uh, the first one, Jimena, Jimena Rey, Morena, are part of the institutional library in Instituto de Ecología. So they helped me to, to design, to organize all the content about these uh, memories, okay? We have all these sections, but the most important thing is that we added the microscopy monograph that I talked before, the, the, the description, okay? And, oh, here. I wanna show you this very, very, very quick. No more than one minute. I'm going quickly to this. Uh, it's a PDF, but this is how it looks this uh, uh, memory, uh, Congress memories. Okay, something like this. Okay, all people involved. Okay, a lot of uh, around eighty people. I will do. I will go through quickly. Okay, 
there are some uh, re resume resume about the uh, bio uh, academic uh, biography of each speaker. Oh, here is the techniques. Is what I'm talking about. Each one, a lot of all the the techniques we uh, decided to 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 add to the Congress. You see, and the, the stats, of course. That's it. Yo, I, I want to show this and we'll go back. Okay. Yeah. What was more important for me that this lady, Jimena, told me, you did guys, you did guys something original. That this uh, microscopy uh, monograph, each people do it uh, original, okay? So any anything, any product that you can do originally in our institution could be granted for one as been is you is you uh, uh, ask yourself. So this requesting was approved two days ago and was nice. For me, it's like a, and a, a, the best evidence of one tangible academic product. And we can get a advantage about this kind of uh, activities we are doing as community. So later, of course, all these uh, certificate, certificates, uh, we, we were involved to, to make all the uh, certificates, but I want to finish, but this is clear that all this is because of the networking that we are doing by this kind of activities, you see? You see? Thanks to Nikki that helped me to find one invited, a uh, foreign invited is what indication that I, hit, I, I have to, to have one uh, foreign speaker. She showed me about this uh, microscopy database, uh, web page uh, she uh, helped me to contact uh, Leah to by this way we contacted another guy because before that I tried to send emails a lot of people I, I guess seven people no one replied okay but this is the way that you can get something of course thanks to Diego and Adam for all all suggestions okay and thanks at all these people as I told you around 80 people I'm I'm very very proud to know to to meet in person each one of these 80 people because I was collaborating and participating I was involved in each activity or that these people were doing okay for me I'm proud of, about this for uh, this guy this guy is a uh, owner of one company he never participated in this bioimaging community but we invited we invited him and he was uh, excited, and now he will continue. He's part of the community. I guess, uh, I, I know that now we will participate with Diego in the workshop number seven. So this guy uh, used to do this kind of work, of course. Uh, of course, uh, thanks to all the, the sponsors and other companies that they people lend us uh, the microscope to carry out the demonstration in our uh, institution. And finally, thank you all for listening to me. Probably we don't have time for questions. We are running out of time, but it has been an excellent talk and very motivating for everybody. Thank you very much, Gaston. And our last talk, last but not least, is the conjunction of the beauty of art, as just Nikki mentioned before. We have Dr. Armando Burgos. He is a researcher at the UAM in the Biological Research Center. He is specialized in insects and also participates 
in forest health issues in Mexico. He teaches about invertebrates in the School of Biological Sciences and other classes at the bachelor's degree level and also in the master's level. And he's a part of the Mexican Entomology Society. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to stay here. It's an honor. It's a great meeting. Great company for all the world. So I would like to say some, some, well, uh, my, my, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I, I have uh, two, two parts of you know, my, uh, speak. First one is about the, uh, what, what I do in my laboratory. And the second one is uh, I, I, uh, I would like to, to say uh, a little surprise for you. Sorry. First one, we are making uh, what, what this, what represent this insect for you? Maybe it's a pest. Maybe it's a bug. So simple. Oh, what behind this bug is it? Please think of my own of this simple insect. Well, let's apply it. First, for example, what is the principle of that digestion? What is the principle? This insect ha have a noise, a mouth? Yes. Yes, it has. What started? Yes, this, uh, this insect have eyes, have a noise, and have a, a brain. He, and he process all the kind of uh, sciences in, okay, in the, in the, in the joke. Well, about the morphology, well, the antenna is the main organ of for receptive doors and all of information receptive and brained and processed. About the ecology, sorry. About the ecology, this insect produces organic matter and contributes information of soil. This organism, this organism is a part of a nutritive cycle and has done these functions of billions of years. Without them, without not having soil, a break the balance. So where the plague does not exist. Environment, for example, this is the response of the environment and the morphology structure adapt to the circumstances. And their uh, feedback between insects and the environment. For the reasons, it's important to take imagine to, to each of the morphology structure, show and function, so imagine. Uh oh, yes. Well, the part of the of objectives, this team make a, a, the compromise to show the imagine and explain what the function is the insects. Well, uh, for example, this, this uh, team for work of a collaboration with National Microscope Laboratory of the Institute of Technology and Mexican Wyoming Workshop. We forced to disestimate uh, digital set imagines to interested public. Well, this is a methodology. We have our three phases 
first one is the fuel. The second one is the material processing and cleaning and assembling. In the first uh, phase three, imagine processing and editing. Well, the first one is to collect our different methods and to prepare the material for taking imagines. The second, the material processing, and cleaning and sampling and different programs and materials. We take a great care to not to alter the, the imagine. Face rays, imagine, the processing and editing, and attack at taxonomy, biologic and ecological information. So what does an imagine represent? For me, it's represented the thousand words. Well, this is the field. This is in the jungle. This is my friend, Rafa Tarano. It's uh, uh, La Candonia people in the middle of the jungle. And this is the process of collecting instruments for us. Well, this is in the lab. We are cleaning, preparing the material to take a photographs. Okay. Well, this is assembling with uh, editing the prog with different programs. And okay, and the result we uh, we make uh, little papers and prepared. See, okay, this is all the effort to integrate information into the technical data sheets and publish them in the any media, whether in painting and or electronic. That was overcome commitments and appropriate information to science, education, economics, and the, and the consequences of such an important source. Exhibitions, for example, this is a some kinds of middles in the Mexico City and Universum. And the important parts of the promoting entomology entomological science and education. The, okay, this is the are sports, the closest it's just important to us to explain what's uh, what is important in each species. Well, we have the balance. Uh, Okay. But well, education this is the most important the results of our, our work. This is uh, this uh, imagine is important to transport it uh, to the public to understand what is that uh, the function of the each each animals. Okay. Well, for example, in this beautiful meeting, says a uh, bioarthropoda, it's a uh, 
we have uh, a lot of uh, some uh, kind of the uh, imagines. And I would like to to say to thank you to patrocinadores. See, for example, uh, especially uh, Chen Chukai Berger. Obviously, the team of the University of UNAM, the team of the Mr. Wood, Adam, and Yuri to invite us. And thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Well, Okay. Well, I, have, I, have, I explained another part. It's a, a little surprise. It's in the jungle. This is my last participation. I would like to say one thing. We don't have uh, any things more. Look inside. You don't can see butterflies or other kinds of insects. It uh, disappears. You know why? It's for this. It's a danger. And this is emitting some kind of energy and repercutate of the insects. There's a problem. Think about it. Care the nature, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful present for all of us. If there is uh, any question for him, or we just stay delighted with the video. <laughs> well, we are passing to uh, another video. Thank you very much for your participation.